To me, it is just coffee. And I think uh, uh, appreciation of coffee is even more important. Knowing and trying different kinds of coffee beans from different countries, different processing, different species, I think it's wonderful. Hi, my name is Alex So, and uh, by my profession, my nature, my practice is actually a photographer. Through photography to different countries, and I would drink coffee from different countries. It's for the love of coffee. Everybody is trying to make coffee taste better. First, we talk about the wave one, wave two, and wave three. The wave one is actually the three in one coffee. So when you pour it and you add in hot water, and you get one nice cup of coffee. Then you have the wave two coffee, which is the Starbucks coffee. This is called the grind coffee. It's like, this is a pre-made coffee. Now, I grind it and brew it. This is the first time you smell it. Then now is the third wave. It's a specialty coffee. So specialty coffee is talking about traceability, the transparency of where the origins of the coffee is from, whether it's from Ethiopia, whether it's from Yemen, whether it's from Indonesia, from Colombia, from all over the world, right? So now then the coffee beans, you people will come, all the professionals will come together and start uh, a specialty coffee association that will have uh, a way, a method to do get point score to the coffee beans. So only 80 points and above, then you call that specialty coffee. If you fall below 80 points, you will go into commercial grade. So you have coffee here, grade one, grade two, grade three, grade four, ungraded. And then you have the grade one, which is the, the 80 points and above. Everybody who drinks specialty coffee know about Geisha right now. It's very fruity, floral, you know. It, then in terms of the same species, but if you bring these particular seeds plant into different countries, because of the country's soil, it changes again. So the characteristics of the coffee comes together. It, it is very different, even though it's from the same species, but it just tastes different. And then for specialty coffee, Panama, this year, uh, the uh, coffee went for auction. Yeah, the highest bid going for one kilo of raw beans before it's even roasted. After you roast it, it left 850 grams at most, right? So one kilo of raw beans going auction at 10,050 US dollars. So when I roast it and make it into one cup, so they sell it in China at about 1,200 Singapore dollars per cup of coffee. It's sold out quickly because people like to try something that is so rare and uh, that why why the coffee is so expensive because it's graded at 96 point should not be great as what is good coffee or bad coffee or rather what is the coffee that's suitable for you because certain people like it more acidic certain people like it more uh, peat bitter People like it more sweet. When I select the coffee, I still like to try from different countries. And of course, the higher it is, the better the coffee is. The Arabicas are the one that um, grow on a higher level. It's hard to access. The Robusta is on the lower land where you need to water them under hot sun. And these have more insects. And then they have to insecticide it, right? Because the coffee need to uh, survive in that kind of climate. So it's actually less... Um, uh, somehow it makes the coffee doesn't taste that great. When I go to Ethiopia, it's like a 2,700 meters mountain, but it's flat land. I mean, when I go there, I say, oh my God, no wonder the coffee survived here because it's such a wonderful place to even to just grow here, to live here. I run a roastery in China, so we had to find the best way to roast this uh, uh, coffee beans to set the best profile for the roasting. Uh, whether then we'll do the cupping, you know. So the roasting does able to change whether the coffee is going to be good or bad. So the roasting methods comes in. When you have the lighter roast in the beading, you are actually trying to extract the floral smells of the coffee. As you get the medium roast, you get the fruitiness 
Oh, you lost a bit, but you must sacrifice where you want to sacrifice. So the the the, the berries, the fruitiness come in. Then as you go darker, you lost the floral and the fruitiness, but you remain a full body dark chocolate, uh, you know, a full body strong coffee. Yeah. So if you are buying uh, expensive coffee beans, <coughs> specialty grade, of course you want to keep the goodness. So if it's like light third rose or light medium rose, you know. Then if you are getting a G4 coffee, it's commercial grade, then you will roast it dark for the espresso. It's the grind size of the coffee beans. If it's too grind too fine, we over extract. If it grind too coarse, you under extract. The second is the water temperature. If it's too hot, you over extract. When it's not hot enough, you under extract. The third is the timing of extraction of the coffee. How long do you take to brew the cup of coffee? Is it going to be a V60? Now, you take two minutes to brew or you take four minutes to brew. All right, if it's too long, over extract. If it's too short, the timing is under extract. Then the fourth thing is the barista. Does a barista really understand about the characteristic of this particular species to bring out the best of it? It's very important. You have to try more coffee in order to know what is more suitable for you. So the characteristic of the uh, coffee um, uh, in different countries. If you go to the South America regions, the, uh, like Brazil, uh, all this, they produce very nutty coffee. Usually the characteristic that is nutty. So when we give points, if it doesn't have this characteristic, it may lose its point as well. Right? Then you go to um, uh, Guatemala, you get those tropicals, uh, sometimes you get berries, mango, fruits, apple, you know. Then you go down to Indonesia, it's because of the volcano soil, the fruits is bigger. So usually you get very uh, dark brown sugar, sugar cane, uh, dark chocolate, you know, uh, Kuala Malacca. Then you go to uh, Middle East, Yemen, uh, uh, in Turkey, you get uh, spices in the coffee. Then you go back to the motherland of coffee, Ethiopia. You get yellow flower, white flower, red flower, then all the beautiful berries and fruits and so forth. It's just amazing, you know. Uh, when we, uh, Rosary, we understood the, the characteristic of different regions, the way they produce, we are able to profile them and make blend. There's no right or wrong. I mean, I cannot fault somebody from adding sugar in the coffee, but I will beg them, if you can, please don't do that. For specialty coffee because I want you to taste the fruitiness, the floral or I don't want you to have additional flavor uh, added into the coffee. I want you to taste a cup, a good cup of pure coffee. Mm -hmm.